upscaling is in. DLSS4 has hit the scene and is injecting four times the amount of frames that are being natively rendered, as well as taking those frames and upscaling them up to four times in order to take computational load off the GPU. FSR4 also recently dropped and is doing a pretty good job of keeping up with DLSS, but the question remains, which one is better? Now, getting this out of the way, DLSS is owned by NVIDIA and is completely proprietary to their cards. If you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, there really isn't much of an option. On the flip side, FSR isn't as exclusive. Intel ARC cards can use FSR. Older GeForce cards can use FSR. And of course, AMD cards can use FSR, but the version of FSR that you'll have access to does depend on the kind of card that you're using, with AMD cards, especially newer AMD cards, being the best in terms of accessibility to the newest version of FSR. Back to NVIDIA, let's start with the definition. I have it right here, so I don't mess it up. Deep Learning Super Sampling, or DLSS, is NVIDIA's proprietary technology that uses AI to parse the information in individual frames of your game to take a game rendered at a smaller resolution and expand it to your screen's resolution or beyond. It can also generate frames in between natively rendered frames, inflating your frame rate upwards of four times. There are some really good videos going over the very nitty gritty of how DLSS works and how it's changed generation to generation. Uh, it's like involves a grid that's laid over the screen and comparing what one frame looks like to another in order to create like a smooth gradient between the two. Um, it's much more complicated than that, obviously, but we won't dive into exactly what's going on in this video. Now, what we will cover is the fact that DLSS 4 has changed from DLSS 3 and has made major improvements. They're using an entirely different system, and it's one that focuses on areas that need more computational power and direct it there. So if you have a complex reflection of, of two characters interacting or lots of lights moving in a scene, then the GPU will notice that and move the power there in order to create smoother transitions and a more convincing look versus a less active area that has simple shapes and less movement. Uh, it will draw power away from that, which leads to a pretty crisp image. Now, DLSS has a lot of classic problems like ghosting and weird textural noise. DLSS 4 has done a pretty good job of addressing those. This includes latency, which is one of the biggest issues that people have with AI-generated frames or fake frames, is that your inputs aren't received at the frame rate that you're actually seeing. They're being received at the natively rendered frame rate. So Reflex 2 aims to kind of close that gap. It's not perfect, but it is an excellent step in the right direction. And Despite the fact that if we were playing, you know, maybe CSGO or something super competitive, we probably wouldn't be using generated frames, it does give a smoother experience and one that's a little closer to natively rendered. DLSS 4 is pretty much the best way to upscale and inject frames into a game to get those really crazy frame rates, and it is the biggest selling point, in our opinion, of the 5000 series GPUs even more so than their actual physical rasterization performance. Okay, so DLSS is great. What about FSR? Fidelity FX Super Resolution is AMD's answer to DLSS. And one of the big things about DLSS is that it is completely tied to NVIDIA cards. FSR doesn't have this problem sometimes. It is open source, despite being made by AMD and can be used on Intel Arc cards. It can be used on older NVIDIA GeForce cards. And of course, it can be used on AMD Radeon cards. But let's talk about FSR4. FSR4 is keeping pace with DLSS4 pretty well. It uses a system that is more similar to DLSS3, but it does a little more of a polished job of it, in our opinion. Now, that being said, uh, FSR4 is brand spanking new. It's also developed in tandem with Sony, so there are very few titles that support it, like 50 odd titles, a lot of them developed by Sony. Support is an issue that extends to FSR 3 as well. It's only supported by like 100 odd games versus DLSS's 750. Like, that's a lot of games. This is in part due to NVIDIA's push within the space and their size. They really want games to be compatible with DLSS because it's one of the biggest selling points of their product. Now, it, what gives? We have this open source version of image upscaling within games, 
it should be easier to implement. It should be more accessible because it's used by more cards. Why does DLSS have this chokehold? Again, we think that it's because it's such a big selling point. And when it comes down to it, the question isn't really what kind of upscaling should I use? It's what kind of upscaling do I have access to? If you have a 5000 series GPU from Nvidia and you want to upscale your game, of course use DLSS4. You paid for it. That's the biggest selling point. The same goes for FSR4. It's exclusive to 9000 series Radeon cards and is really quite nice. It's the one that you should use, again, if you want that experience. There are minor differences in performance from DLSS4 to DLSS3 to FSR4 to any other upscaling technology, but for what it's worth, we like DLSS first. And if it's not available, we use FSR. And if we have no need to upscale a game, given our screen size or because we want a super snappy, natively rendered experience, then of course, just natively render it. There is so much to talk about when it comes to upscaling and fake frames. So if there's a topic you want us to cover in more depth, we will happily do it. Just mention it in the comments below. And if you want to try out the new FSR or DLSS for yourself and you don't have a new GPU and you don't want to build a computer right now, you can call us with the number on screen or visit us on our website and we will purpose build a computer with your GPU of choice to crush whatever game or project that you're working on. This has been Marcus with Velocity Micro, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.